Hi, I am a contributor to Piff Network. Piff Network is basically a price oracle. We take market data and we put it on chain to make it available for everybody, which is super cool. How it works is that we have a load of really high quality first party publishers and they publish data to our app chain. The app chain is called PiffNet. This data is aggregated on PiffNet and we then provide a sort of robust statistical aggregation and try to make it resilient to different price outliers and stuff like this. And then we produce an aggregate price and an aggregate confidence interval. And then we basically send this data to other ch chains which have apps which people will consume our prices on using Wormhole. What we're interested in today is how to consume one of these aggregate prices on one of these target chains, specifically Aptos. But just briefly stepping back, if you're a price oracle, there's two ways that you can stream prices to chains. One of them is using the push model. We send prices constantly to the chains, so the chain is constantly being updated with the latest price for every price feed. And the other one is that we only update the price when the consumer needs it. And obviously the second one is a lot more scalable and you can scale to many different chains and many different price feeds without um, actually paying a prohibitive cost. So we've chosen that one, but there's this is called the on-demand update model, and you can read more about the rationale behind this and some of the nuances on our website if you go to docs.pif.network slash consume data slash on-demand. But there's another video about this that Jay did that you should look at as well. That's basically sort of the high-level view. So the high-level flow is that when you want to consume a price on Aptos, you have to update that price before you can use it. That minimizes the risk of front running as well because it ensures that the price that you're using is going to be like updated by you in a single atomic transaction, which is cool. In terms of actually how to use these price feeds in your application, how to interact with our API, you should go to docs.pif.network slash consume data slash best practices. And this will basically give you an introduction to the API that we use and the API we give to you. Each price feed has an ID, and you should go to the price feed's ID page linked from that documentation and choose the chain you want, which is Aptos in our case, and then choose the price feed you want and copy the ID and then give that to our code. Prices are represented using fixed point representation, so you need to convert between our representation and the representation that you need to use in your application. And this page also has some more discussions of some other things that you should be aware of. So it's really important that you read this whole page before you integrate with us in order to use prices safely. The other aspect to this is in order to actually get the data to publish to update the price feeds with, we expose a price service for you to do this. And this basically uses the data that Wormhole gives us. And we package it up in a nice way for you so you don't have to worry about serializing or deserializing and things like this. And we provide a nice JavaScript SDK, which we've also linked to from this documentation called pifaptos.js. And this provides some convenience functions for you to fetch the latest data and then give it to the on-chain functions. After reading the sort of broad introduction documentation, you should go to docs.pif.network slash consume data slash aptos, and this will tell you like where our contracts are, the source code, and where the addresses are, and what price feeds are available on aptos. This is like all the aptos-specific information, but you should read the stuff I mentioned previously first. The first thing you should do is basically go to the source code, and we've linked to that on the homepage. So the source code is this pif.move file, and it's split into two sections. One is updating the prices, and one is querying the prices. First of all, to update the prices, there's two functions. There's update price feeds with Thunder, which you should use if you're a TypeScript or off-chain application that requires using the entry function. And this basically gives you the account that you pay the update fee from and the update data that you give the contract. This withdraws the amount of Aptos coins and then calls the update price feeds function. So if you're interacting with our contract via your own contract, so like you make a cost contract call, we should use update price feeds, not update price feeds with Thunder, which will take the exact amount of Aptos coins that we require. So you should query this get update fee function, which will return the amount of coins that we require to update the price feed with. And then we, it will deposit those coins and then update the price feeds using that given data. In, in terms of choosing between these functions, you should really prefer this one because you can't accidentally overpay us. But if you are calling us from off-chain, then you need to use this one because you need an entry function. So once you've updated the price feeds, you can then query the cash prices. And this is using the sort of second half of the contract, starting on 273. And it provides some convenience functions. Does the price feed exist? And then some other 
convenience functions as well. But the one that you'll be most interested in is get price. And it basically returns this price object if the price is not stale, if the price has been updated recently. And ideally, the price would have been updated recently because you would have done so in the same transaction. This basically returns a price struct, and this is a, represents a price with a degree of uncertainty, represented as a price and a confidence interval. The confidence interval is a measure of uncertainty around the price, and you should really take this into account in your application so that you shouldn't use the price if it's very, very uncertain. And like this is very application-specific, how to use this confidence interval safely. Please refer to our documentation and how to do this, because it depends on the, the exact semantics and economics of your application. So yeah, this gives us a price, a confidence, an exponent, and a timestamp. The, the slight nuance is that the price is assigned using our signed integer class, because prices on PIF are represented using signed integers, and Aptos doesn't have native support for signed integers. So as a stopgap, we've made a class which stores the magnitude and the sign separately in a type-safe way, in order to minimize the chances of getting some weird sign error or Q component error or something like this. This exposes some functions like get price that you can check to see what the sign is. And then once you've determined what the sign is, if that sign is acceptable to you, so saying like if the exponent typically is negative and prices are typically positive, then you can extract the magnitude. And this will fail if the sign is not what you expect, which is a sort of safe wrapper. So you fail first instead of accidentally using a price with the wrong sign. And when Aptos supports signed integers, then we'll move to that representation. But for now, we have this class. So that's just something to be aware of. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the API. It's very simple, it's just update and query. So as an example now, we have this simple example application, and it basically allows you to send a specified amount of Aptos coins from one person to another, but you specify the amount of coins you want to send in dollars, and then we use PIF to do the conversion rate. So it's just like a very simple toy application of how to consume PIF on, on chain. So this function basically takes a person you're sending it from, a person you're sending it to, the dollar amount, and then the PIF update data to update the price feeds with. So the first thing that we do is we need to update and fetch the price. So this is the thing that probably most contracts will need to use, like this exact code. And this basically withdraws the amount of coins needed for the update fee, updates the price feed, and then reads the price from chain. And we do that using the apt price feed identifier that I referenced before. So when you go to the price feeds IDs website, you can just take this from the list of feeds we have. Then we convert the PIF price to the number of coins required. So we basically, we get the price in the exponent using the if positive and if negative. We also get the confidence interval, and we need to check that the confidence interval isn't too wide for our purposes, and so that's really important. We then get the price in Aptos coins by converting from Aptos to Octas, and then we transfer the amount of Aptos coins. And then inside the off-chain part of the code, we use this Aptos price JS, so PIF Aptos JS SDK, to get the price feed update data, and this gives us the update data in the format that the contract expects, and all we have to do is pass it to the entry function. So it's really, really simple. Like This is all the PIF-specific off-chain code that you need. So yeah, should we do a quick demo? So this is the price on the, the off-chain price. It's being updated. And then when we want to put this on chain, we can send like a specific amount of money from someone to someone else, and we can transfer this. So we can just click transfer, and then we can approve the transaction, and it's done. So then we can even check on the Explorer, and we should see, yeah, we can see that there's a coin transfer being taken place. If you have any questions, you should first of all go to the documentation on the pif.network slash consume data. Um, and a lot of stuff is explained in quite a lot of detail on there. So that's what I'd recommend to look first. But if you have any more questions, feel free to hit us up on Telegram or Discord. Mm -hmm.